here in Ginnaret, Louisiana, uh, where we are going to do a loft visit with a local fancier and also a racing pigeon store owner, Mr. Ed. Um, he's the owner of Seagulls Racing Pigeon Supplies. And this is what I love the most about this sport, racing pigeons, connecting people, uh, making new friends, uh, building network. Can you imagine? I live all the way from San Antonio, Texas, and because of this hobby, racing pigeons, um, we meet people online and we meet people uh, and even though we never met in person um, I'll tell them that I'm around and uh, maybe they are available for an interview well the main purpose of this YouTube channel is to promote this sport uh, club racing uh, backyard flying and even for one loaf race and later today we will have the opportunity to interview Mr. Ed in his store Seagulls here in Generet, uh, Louisiana. Greetings and welcome to our channel Film Express Racing Pigeons. We are here today in state of Louisiana where you can get authentic Cajun cuisine and I am here today with Mr. Ed Manville. Manville. And he is the local fancier and owner of Seagulls Racing Pigeon Supplies here in the United well, States. Thank you so much, sir, for allowing us to visit you in your store. And uh, later on, he will also show us his breeding loft and give us some idea and um, knowledge about how to do the racing pigeons. How are you today, sir? I'm great. Great. Thank Great. you so much, sir. So, can you tell us a little bit something about yourself, sir? Well, I've been doing the Charles Siegel Company, um, owning it for 34 years. Um, I've been a lifelong pigeon fancier. My uncle and grandfather had pigeons right on the property where we are now. And so I grew up as a young, young boy with a experience with racing birds from the time I was barely able to walk. So you were born with it. That's why you got involved with the racing pigeons. It was a, pa it was a passion. The first time I laid eyes on mm -hmm. racing pigeons, specifically racing pigeons, the ones that would fly, Correct. Uh, I fell in love and I've been in love with them ever mm -hmm. since. So b because there are some fanciers that are involved with fancy fancy pigeons have you been involved with fancy pigeons before? i did for a short period of time and you know i like pigeons mm -hmm. so i like fancy pigeons too Correct. some of them are absolutely beautiful <laughs> but for me just standing watching mm -hmm. a bird wasn't as much fun for me as mm -hmm. when i could have the birds be participating in something as in as active as racing and flying and just watching the birds fly and is so amazing. you started backyard flying something like that oh absolutely yeah. and then club racing before yeah and can you tell us something about the the difference between the club racing back in the day and now because I know you are selling the the, the modern clock which is the benzing m3 and you're also selling the m2 right M2 and M3, M2 and, and M2, all the benzing well, clocks. Well, yeah. benzing or this type of clocks, they're not around no. long time. I mean, back in the back day. Back when I was a young man, young child, mm -hmm. we didn't have clocks at all. How do you do it? We, we rode a bicycle. There you go. <laughs> the same thing when I was in the Philippines, I was like 11 or 12 years old. You know, they will toss the bird, like birds, like 100 miles or 200 miles. We have to wait the whole day. And then grab the bird and then whoever run first yeah so so two things yeah first 
the, the bird should the bird be. raced and then we raced. <laughs> so we are on the same page, you know, back in the day. So, so the question is, um, how long you've been doing this? Uh, uh, how, how long did you do that club racing? Are you still doing the club racing? I can't. I don't have the time. You, you, you are so Running busy. the company is too involved. But what I stay involved with is I have a group of fanciers. Correct. Who I call them my partners. Correct. I breed mm -hmm. here because I studied the genetics in college. Okay. So I apply my genetic uh, techniques. Okay. And then my partners do the racing. So we are in constant contact, some of them every day, mm -hmm. where we speak about every aspect of the racing. Mm -hmm. So it's just as if I was in the loft. What are we putting in the water? Or what are we, how are we training them? How are we feeding them? What kind of medication or vitamins or supplements are we giving them? Everything, everything, mm -hmm. everything involving the sport, just as if I was doing it myself, mm -hmm. but I'm doing it with five or six different people. Okay. So I'm very involved in that part of it and I learn a lot that way because there's still so many challenges to racing in different parts of the country, mm -hmm. different conditions of weather. Um, everything is a challenge Correct. and there's a lot of good competition. Because you mentioned so, that you are, you study the genetics and you are breeding your own birds. Of course, everybody breeds their own uh, pigeon, of course, right? To, to well, to uh, within uh, within the limitations of what you started with, right? Correct. So I bought families of birds already existing lofts in Europe, mm -hmm. and brought them here, and then we began the selection process to meet our needs. And a few of these families have stayed with me mm -hmm. for now approaching. Oh, in some cases, uh, twenty-five years. But the good question is. Do you already have your own strain or are you in the goal of creating your own strain? If, if we were to go to Europe together okay, and we would approach a fancier that's had the pigeons as long as I've had them, okay. it would be his own strain. Correct. In my mind, I'm still thinking of those pigeons as Van Loons or, or, or Musketeers or whatever Musketeers. it was that I brought right. in many years ago. Okay. It's hard for me, and I'm sure a lot of Americans the same way, to think of themselves as the creator of a family of birds. Correct. But I think if you stop and realize that if you've bred these families as long as I've bred them, it's really my own families now. Many of That's these true. families now, four or five generations that mm -hmm. they've been with me, I'd have to say yes. It's but you're family. not really focusing on that. You're focusing on the success I don't, um, my goal is not to create a family anymore. I, th I thought in the original beginning, yes. Okay. I've learned enough about genetics uh -huh. to know that's not really the case. Okay. You have to create the great pigeons. Correct. And they will take care of creating the family on their own. Because I'm trying to piggyback with what you said that you studied about the genetics. And mastering the genetics of these pigeons will give you the opportunity to create your own strain, exactly. am I correct? Exactly. So, do you have any particular uh, uh, stock birds or strain that you're keeping, like you know, you're treasuring in your loft? Well, sure. I mean, we have families of birds that have kind of gotten into my heart because okay. they've done some things mm -hmm. for me okay. that make me feel good. You know, uh -huh. they won. They've we've had some birds that were. Uh, America's Ace Pigeon, National Ace Pigeon of North America on the Digest Awards. Mm -hmm. We've done that two or three times. We've had birds in the national standings of the American Racing Pigeon Union, mm -hmm. number one in the country, first place yearling, uh, number one yearling in the country, also in the IF. Uh, so those families of pigeons that have done those things mm -hmm. becomes very special. and. I still have all those pigeons. Really? I still have the family that created those fam yeah. pigeons. And then we try to make, okay, now where do you go? Well, you got to try to get better, right? You yes. try to keep going. So you've been doing this for almost quarter of a century, right? Or more. Yeah. So how many years? Like, uh... I've been doing pigeons 
and since I studied genetics in college, and honestly, I probably was skipping class to study pigeon genetics more than I should have been. Yes. But, okay, I, I studied a lot of genetics in college, and I don't think that I will ever learn all I want to learn about it. Mm -hmm. But in the, th in the years from the graduation in college until now, I would say now I've been breeding pigeons for the better part of 45 years. 45 years, almost a half of a century. And do you still remember the first, let's say, let's first pedigree bird that you, you owned? Yeah. And what is the strain of that? Uh, Bastine and, and, and Dorden. Okay. A combo of Bastine and Dorden. Did you keep that strain or you, no, you, you switched? No, it was just one pigeon. We called him Solo. Mm -hmm. I only had uh, seven pigeons. Okay. So that's what I started with. He was the only good one. Uh -huh. <laughs> but he kept coming back and I called him Solo because he would come back by himself. And Bastine is like one of the oldest strains. Old strain. Yeah. Right. Um, so what are the characteristics of the birds that you, you consider while you're acquiring you know, certain birds? For example, oh, I like this bird. I, I, I need to have this in my loft. I think I look at it differently now than I did before. Okay. I, I used to think that everything was about the, the shape of the bird or the handling of the bird or the way the bird was, was built. Okay. And I learned there's a lot more to the genetic package in that pigeon than okay. just this. Do you believe in eye sign, in the wings, those kind of stuff? I believe in performance. Performance. That is the critical thing, more important than all other things. Uh -huh. performance, 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 performance. I always hear that, performance, performance. It has to be there. I don't care, the shape of the bird will differ in every loft you go into. Mm -hmm. If you go to Europe and you handle as many birds as I've handled, which is many, many, many thousands and thousands mm -hmm. and thousands, some of the world's most famous pigeons I've handled, mm -hmm. and they're all phenomenal handling pigeons. Yes. But they all handle it a little differently. Correct. And yet, the common denominator mm -hmm. is performance. Performance. The result, it's of, the result. Of, their, of their performance. Exactly. So, so how do you feed your birds? Like, how do you take care of them? Like, you know, do you have a particular way of feeding them? I study. Okay. I study. Uh, there's a lot of information that is constantly changing, mm -hmm. but the research that's been done, okay. in, especially in Belgium, is very good. Okay. And they have good information on when you should feed high protein, when you should feed high carbohydrates, when mm -hmm. you should feed high fat, uh, not to overfeed, uh, and, and mixing the types of feed and the types of seeds that will create mm -hmm. A, a mixture that keeps the birds healthy without overfeeding them uh -huh. is also very, very important. Okay. And that's something that I've spent a lot of time doing. So I don't say that I feed any specific mix. Okay. I feed what's like necessary at the, the time of the year. Like the percentage of the protein, those kind of stuff and everything. Well, sure, we watch that, but it has to be good protein. Yes. There's lots of different types of protein. Mm -hmm. So there's good protein and bad protein. Highly right. digestible protein is what mm -hmm. we're looking for. Not all protein is the same. Okay. So there again, we study those things and we've learned a lot in that yes. time. Mm -hmm. Even though it says it's a 15% or 17% protein, mm -hmm. it may not be 17% digestible protein. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's all very kind of complicated. It's kind of complicated, but it's learnable. Something like you can it's learn. It's definitely learnable and it's been something I've put my life into doing. Okay. And we are so thankful because you are here today being interviewed and sharing us this type of knowledge. So there are some fanciers, they will think that should I feed my birds twice a day or once a day or how many protein before I raise them? before I send them to one loft race, those, because you started, everybody, you know, back in the day, uh, started in club racing. And we highly encourage many fanciers to still continue doing the club racing. And there are some techniques in regards with that, right? Like, you know, for example, there will exactly. be a basketing before the basketing. So can you tell us something, a little bit information about that? For example, Monday is the basketing. What should I, well, do. you won't basket on Monday okay, unless you're flying in Europe. Mm -hmm. You basket on a Friday or a thir Friday. Or Thursday or Friday or maybe even a Saturday for okay, a Sunday Okay, let's, let's do basketing Friday, let's say. What okay. should I do? 
how am I going to feed the birds, what percentage, what kind of feed. Just a, a little bit of information. The first thing I tell everyone who I work with is to be, they must become a weatherman. Okay. You're getting ready to put a pigeon into a race. Okay. You must know mm -hmm. what is that bird going to have to do, deal with Correct. to come home. Mm -hmm. Is it going to be a headwind race? Is it going to be a tailwind race? Is it going to be cloudy weather? Is it going to be sunny weather? Is it going to be a side wind? How fast do you think that bird will be able to fly that distance? Okay. How far is the race going to be? Okay. Then when you know that, okay. which really you should wait, be that, that should be early, early in the week or the mm -hmm. two weeks before. Okay. Then you prepare that pigeon according to what you know it's going to have to deal with. Mm -hmm. All during the week, not just basketing day. Basketing day is probably the least important day. Mm -hmm. It's all those days before that. Correct. So, obviously, if it's a short race and it's going to be fast, you mm -hmm. don't going to feed the bird very much, right? Yes. If it's a hard race, you're expecting a long time on the wing, you got to put the fuel in the tank. Correct. And the fuel is fat mm -hmm. and carbohydrates, mm -hmm. not protein. Not protein. So you go higher with the fat. Okay. Good fat. So lower protein, higher fat. Yeah. Good fat. Good fat, digestible fat. And it takes 48 hours for that fat to turn into energy. So okay. you have to feed them on Thursday mm -hmm. for a Saturday race. Correct. What you're giving them on, on Friday is less important. Oh, okay. So for example, now we're done with the feeding and everything. How about, um, of course, we are not gonna, we cannot avoid our birds to get sick. What do you do and how do you prevent those? I listen to the experts. Okay. The experts being the people who do it professionally for a okay. living, like Dr. Colin Walker in Australia, who okay. I consider to be one of the best in the world. Dr. Ralph Herbus is a good personal friend of mine from okay. Belgium. Several veterinarians, Dr. Wim Bodart is another one. Okay. People who do these things every day of their life, okay. and that's all they do, is health okay. of pigeons. And I, I listen to what they say. Of course you take note about that. Of course we do. <laughs> and of course it takes, every, everything is, a, is an approach is different. We try to stay away from medicine as mm -hmm. much as possible. Yes. But that's not always possible. What is important now is we know you must vaccinate. Correct. The more you vaccinate, the mm -hmm. better, not the, the better. other way around. Mm -hmm. So if you vaccinate your young birds when they are four weeks old, okay. and then you go and do a, a, a follow-up vaccine three weeks later with especially certain vaccines that, that are now available, mm -hmm. you can prevent the young bird diseases that we've been dealing with Correct. for the last 10 or 12 years. Because that's one of the many cases why other parents doesn't want their kids to be involved with pigeon hobby because of the scared they are scared you know of or they are f they, because of the fear of of, of a crossover crossover disease. and okay, also so like first of all in all the history of mm. all the diseases of the pigeons and humans correct has been no crossover correct okay so as far as the disease jumping from a pigeon to a human mm -hmm. the re the percentage chance of that you have a lot better chance of getting struck by lightning correct not but at least now we can, you know, say that there's medications, vaccinations that... There's vaccinations for the viruses. Correct. There are some products like the Ecotonic, which we've made a, a lot. That I'm, about that to, helps, I'm about to say that. That helps to decrease the amount mm -hmm. of virus present in mm -hmm. the water. Mm -hmm. So the birds don't ingest so much virus. Mm -hmm. To keep them healthier, that, mm -hmm. that helps. But then bacteria is mm -hmm. a whole different story. Correct. You're talking about the main one, Salmonella, which is all over the United States, all over the world. Mm -hmm. And there is still medicines available mm -hmm. that will treat for that. I see it in the company every day when I get calls from customers all the time. Correct. Salmonella is still very prevalent. Correct. Mostly because the people don't vaccinate their birds. Correct. They don't keep their pigeons in the proper types of conditions in their lofts. Mm -hmm. And of course, they think a little five-day medication treatment is going to be enough to take care of it, and that's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. So they don't use the medicines for long enough. Mm -hmm. They may not be using the proper medicine. Correct. And then they don't vaccinate. I know, Mr. Ed, that you traveled uh, most of the time in Europe, right? You met 
fanciers that been in the in the business for longer than we can think of. And when was the time that you you, you thought that oh I, I can I can formulate this what you are mixing now the you know the, the vitamins or the, the stuff uh, health preventions or whatnot or you know diseases prevention when when did you come up with that idea that oh I can do this I can I can make the mixtures in everything? Well, it took a lot of help. I mean, I, I got very friendly with some people who were in the scientific research part of the business mm -hmm. many years ago. You're not taking just the, all the credit, like you know. It's no, because I of don't. The odd. No, it, it would be facetious of me to think that I came up with these ideas. Yeah. It's. It's research yes. and proven techniques and proven statistical data mm -hmm. of products that have been tested and tested and mm -hmm. tested and tested, not by just a few, but by many. Yes. And then get access to the data. Correct. And when we have access to the data, mm -hmm. okay, I got lucky to get access to the data. Mm -hmm. Then I could create my own, and I still had to hire professionals to help me. Okay. But we did it, and we have some good products now. And that and, worked for our customers. So what if the pigeon got sick? Uh, for example, I'm a new fancier. What should I do? The, the first thing I'm going to do is ask you a whole lot of questions. Okay. Because I have to for, get an idea in my mind what your bird has been through okay. in your loft. Mm -hmm. How have you treated the bird or not treated the bird? Okay. And then knowing what I know from my background experience with pigeons, I can start to piece together an mm -hmm. idea of what could probably be wrong with that bird. Correct. And I get those calls every single day. Okay. Numerous times. Mm -hmm. So five, six, seven, eight, sometimes more in a day, mm -hmm. I get those calls. So I'm constantly being challenged mm -hmm. mentally okay. to think what could be going on in this guy's loft. Mm -hmm. And he may be in... Washington State or New York City mm -hmm. or California or Florida or wherever. Mm -hmm. And they're all in different climates. Correct. They're all dealing with something different. But I have to ask the questions. So I'm going to mm -hmm. try to find out what type of loft do you have? What type of floor do mm -hmm. you have? How often do you clean your loft? Do you clean your loft? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, do you medicate? Do you vaccinate? Mm -hmm. do you, what do you do? Yeah. And then give me the symptoms. What's the bird doing? Is the bird limping? Does the bird have a swollen wing? Does mm -hmm. the bird droop his wing? Is the bird gasping for air? Does he have wet eyes? Does he have canker in the throat? Does mm -hmm. he have mucus in the throat? And the, they also is he losing weight? The, the poop also there, like, you know, if and you... The, like and how, how does the poop look? Yes, yeah. absolutely. All well, of those things. Mm -hmm. We go through that whole thing. Okay. And then I get a mental image in my mind mm -hmm. what that bird may have. Mm -hmm. And there's usually a choice of several things. Okay. And then we decide... Okay, we're going to save you some money Okay. so you don't have to spend a fortune trying to go to a veterinarian and they're probably not going to know Correct. any better than me. Mm -hmm. Most veterinarians in the United States are not for pigeons, right? Yes. So it's difficult. Correct. In Europe, that would be a different story. Yes. Okay, so then we say, all right, these are the things it could probably be, so this is what we're going to use to try to treat. Mm-hmm. And let's keep our fingers crossed it works. And you're open with that. Like, you know, people ask you questions and you don't get, you know, I mean, you get, it's overwhelming. Like, you know, people call you and everything. It's what I do. But that's what you do. It's what I do. Yeah. So it's not overwhelming. It's, it's gratifying to know that I'm right so many times. Correct. That because is I am, I take great pride in the fact mm -hmm. that I'm very often correct. Mm -hmm. About 80 to 90% of the time. Uh -huh. And customers will call me Sometimes five, six, seven months or a year later and say, man, what you told me to do worked like a charm. Mm -hmm. And some of it would be the craziest things to think that some of the stuff that had come into my mind that that bird may have, you mm -hmm. would never think, oh, that could happen to a pigeon. Mm -hmm. Yes, it could. And we've managed to overcome those problems. And so a lot of guys trust me. I have a large following of mm -hmm. customers who call me and they trust that I'm going to give them as good of an answer as I possibly mm -hmm. can. And many times it's going to be right. I believe in the entire U.S., like fanciers around the United States. Well, I also take pride in the fact that I've been here long enough Correct. 
that and travel the United States enough times, mm -hmm. go to conventions, go give seminars everywhere mm -hmm. around the United States, that many people have met me. Correct. And I've met many people. Mm -hmm. So we have a relationship. That at least we know one another. And educate some, some new fanciers. Yeah. I've and given uh, many seminars around the United States uh, about health, about how to fly pigeons, about how to get pigeons healthy, how to do the genetics, uh, various things. Mm -hmm. So I've been at it a long time. And, okay. and when you have that many years behind you, you generally you get some people to start knowing who you are. Correct. <laughs> and, and Ed is uh, kind enough to tour us in his store, correct? And this is... a. Uh, House of the modest old place, right? Your, you said your grandma, my great grandma, great grandma's house here in Generet, Generet, Louisiana. And after the tour, he will also show us his breeding loft, correct? Yes. Okay, well, thank you again, sir. And then we're gonna do the tour, by the way, sir. We also have a project for our military veterans. I established this project uh, back in February this year. And this is a support group for our troops. And we all know that the nature of their job, our job, I'm a veteran myself, the job when we were serving, you know, that's why there's a PTSD, emotional problem and everything. So I came up with this idea of gifting birds to our military veterans, involving them in this type of hobby. Because we all know there's a relaxation, you know, that we get from the pigeons. So this is our project, Racing Pigeons for Military Veterans, and that is our uh, website, and this is our email address, and these are stickers, and this is, this is a decal, and uh, yes sir, and this is my channel, Film Express Racing Pigeons, so. and uh, because of the welcoming, uh, uh, Mr. Ed welcomed us here, I'm giving him a gift, it's a uh, RPMV t-shirt, Racing Pigeons for Military Veterans. It's a support group for our troops. Very good. Yes, sir. And this is yours. So I will give you in return some Seagulls hats. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. And he gonna tour us in his store and his breeding loft. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you.